This is Mr. Smith, and here is a quick animation I did that involves people talking. Let's play it to see what it looks like. Hey, you want to hear a joke? No. Okay, so now that you've seen it, let's explain how I did it. Now, first of all, two of these characters, well, I made them two different ways. First one, I didn't make it all. This one here, I didn't make it all. I just went into the library, went into characters, found the character I wanted to pick, and drag it right over. Now, these characters don't move. They're added by Tech for Learning, which is kind of nice that they give us all these wonderful characters to pick from, but they don't move in and of themselves. So we sort of have to cheat to get them to move. This character here I made using the basic shape tools. You can find a tutorial on that on this YouTube channel. So, you know, that's there too. Now, this one was the hard one to animate, and it wasn't really hard. It was just a little more time consuming. What I did for that was I took the first frame, like this, and I pressed the clone button, and it made an additional frame that was an exact copy in every respect to the first one. And then I just took the mouth a little bit, and I made it a little bit smaller. And then I cloned it again, and I made the mouth a little bit smaller. Then I cloned it again, and you get the idea. Now, I only did this for making the mouth close, because what you can do then is you take the slides you already had. So closed it, closed it. For this one here, this is the same as the one that came two steps before that. So I went back and I cloned this one and I drug it over. Then I went back and I cloned the very first one and I drug that over. So as, as you can see, as I'm clicking between this slide and this slide, there's no difference in what you're seeing up here because it's really the same slide. All I did was copy it with the clone tool. Very convenient. Then I selected the whole thing and I copy pasted it a bunch of times until there was enough of them to get to the end of the line, which was, hey, do you want to hear a joke? And I actually had a few extra because it didn't line up exactly, so I had to delete a few frames. Now, once he was done asking, hey, do you want to hear a joke? Now, for most of these, if you take a look, the duration was 0.1 second over here. So each of these is on the screen for one-tenth of a second until I'm done talking, or, well, it's my voice. That's not necessarily me. My wife would never let me have that hairstyle, unfortunately. But there's one of these where it's on the screen for 1.7 seconds. Why? Because that's how long the gap is between the first voice saying, hey, do you want to hear a joke? And the second voice saying, nope. So this is here pretty much just as a filler. And I adjusted it just to make sure that there was going to be no movement between one person talking and the next person talking. This is something that you really have to, I want to say eyeball it. I also want to say play by ear. It's a little bit of both. You make it a length you think will work and you hit the play button. And if it's too long, you shrink it. If it's not long enough, you make it longer. If it's really, really long, like over 10 seconds, then you might want to trim your audio in some way, shape, or form because that's a long time to wait between lines of dialogue. Okay, so... For this person to talk, I decided to use a different technique. You see that red arrow there? That's because I made a custom animation. Now here's how I did this. Let's clone this again. Clone exactly. All right, so I'm just going to show you the various pieces that I made here. I started off with that frowny face, which is rather rectangular. It didn't have to be. I could have masked it off entirely and started fresh. I decided I liked that frowny face, but I wanted the mouth to open more, so I took a rectangle with the square tool over here in shapes, and I made it totally black, and I did adjust the nodes a little bit. So it's not exactly a rectangle anymore, but I wanted to try to match it with the basic shape of that mouth. And then I took another rectangle, and I've adjusted the notes for this also, and I put that on top. Now, this matches the color of the skin exactly. How did I do that? Oh, well, that's really cool. If you have a shape, and you want it to match a color that's already on the screen, in frames, what you can do is you go over to the color selection button, and we click and drag, and whatever color the eyedropper is on top of is the color that rectangle will become or whatever shape you're selecting. So if I go over a skin tone, it copies that skin tone. If I go over a different skin tone, it copies that skin tone. If I go over this green mohawk, well, it copies that green exactly, 
and this shape will match that shape's color exactly. You can't tell where one stops and the next one begins. So that's kind of cool for a lot of reasons. Now, to make this masking part here move down and back up again, I could have done the same step I did over here, where I move it down a little bit, clone, move down a little bit, clone, etc. But I decided to use the animate option. And I could have gone with line and taken this line here and moved it down like this to determine how far it would go. Like that. And then done the reverse by hitting clone. It would ask, okay, how do you want to clone this? I want to clone from the final location. Now it's down all the way. And click on the shape again. Animate. I have my line there already, but I want to take that Hard to see. Can I reach it? Yes, I can. Then move it back up like this. And I shrunk it really far, so that doesn't look quite right. So let's make it larger again. So now if I hit play, it opens and closes. Well, I decided. That was too much work. I didn't want to do that. So instead, what I did was I picked custom. And in custom, you can drag the shapes around. And wherever you drag them, that's where it moves during the duration. And rather than have this mouth fly all over the place, instead, I can edit this. I can click on edit to redo this. And let's create half. All I did was drag it down a little bit and back up again and that was enough and when I hit play the mouth went down and back up again and I can duplicate that as many times as I want to I can hit clone and it'll ask do I want to, how do I want to copy this I just pick clone exactly and I could have the person speaking for a while by doing that I decided because it was a single syllable response it wasn't no I'd rather not hear a joke it was just nope I had him just open and close his mouth once, and I set the duration to 0.5, which was almost exactly the amount of time that that last remaining bit of audio took up. So those are technically three different ways that you can animate a mouth moving in frames. Hey, you want to hear a joke? No. And if I spent more time on it, I could probably trim this up so that it didn't come down and cover up the bottom part of the head there. I could mask out the mouth entirely and draw a new one. Uh, there's even more ways to do this than what I showed, but those are some basic ways of doing it. So try this out, make something awesome, and until next time, have fun.